Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with Ask Dave episode number 303. Today we're going to look inside a Ballon, a real one. This is a Ballon that I've had for quite a while. This is from Ballon Designs. At the time that they made it, it was called their Model 3. It's a different model number now. It's a 4 to 1 what they call tuner Ballon, and it can handle up to 5 kilowatts. That's quite a bit. It's their model 4124T. Okay, and we're going to take a look at it. It's ballondesigns.com. Now, first of all, this thing is uh, hefty. So let's just put this on the scale right here. Okay, turn on the scale, put this thing on. We come up with one pound and 10.8 ounces. That's uh, about one pound, 12 ounces, or one and uh, three quarters pounds. So it's pretty heavy. This is not the kind of thing that you want to have hanging from a feed line. In fact, this thing has got mounting screws on here, stainless steel, that you can use uh, with appropriate hardware to mount this to a mast. And then you've got uh, your coax coming out of it, and you've got your two wires here for uh, your antenna. Note the positive here. That is electrically wired through to the center conductor of this right here. And uh, I'll show you how the thing uh, works uh, with the schematic, but first let's look inside of it. It hasn't been opened in a very long time till I opened it earlier this evening. I was half expecting to find water in it, but there wasn't any. It was nice and dry, which is just a testament to the dry community that uh, we live in. Um, there is some talk uh, about these particular uh, balance because they are sealed. Um, they can, uh, you, they get real hot and the air escapes and then they get cool and air comes back in because the uh, inside air pressure when it cools creates a little bit of a vacuum. That's a recipe for bringing water in it. So some people drill little tiny weep holes down here or at the wherever the bottom of the thing is going to be mounted. As you can see from the color, it's it was up against a board. This is the part that was away from the sun, and the sun takes its toll as it always does. Okay, so this is what's uh, inside here. What we see is a coax cable coming from the SO239 right here. Um, to a wire straight through out the positive side over here. Now to make this thing balanced what happens is that the uh, uh, shield is connected over here uh, at a halfway point in the ballon and then this is the other end is connected to this terminal here. Now, this is a mechanism called an auto transformer, and it uh, turns this into a voltage ballon because the voltage, um, it's a two to one ratio. So the voltage that is here will be twice what the voltage is here. Of course, that means the current will be half what it is uh, here. So, um, that guarantees that these two terminals right here have the same voltage. So normally you'd put this at the center of something or you'd feed a loop with it or something like that. This is HF, of course, HF balance. Um, now, what's interesting about this, because it's a two to one transformer ratio, the uh, voltage is doubled, the current is cut in half, so you end up with a ratio of four when you multiply current times voltage. And anyway, the impedance ratio of a transformer like this is the turns ratio squared, which will give you four to one. This is a four to one balance. So if it's um, 50 ohms here, it's going to be 200 ohms here. Um, I would think for a loop, sometimes you might want to go with a higher ratio. Uh, 
I know the, they make one of these ballons for uh, the transformer that goes at the end of an NFED half wave. That's actually a 49 to 1, which means a 7 to 1 turns ratio. That is a humongous uh, piece of uh, ferrite core in there. It's very large. It can withstand quite a bit of heat, which will be generated as the thing operates at high power. Um, okay, let's take a look now at just how this works. We're going to do this with the whiteboard here. Let's take the uh, magnetic core, which of course is a toroid in the actual device, and we'll just draw it as a magnetic core, okay? Usually done that way. Now, what happens is you've got two windings. Well, it seems like two windings. You've actually got one. You've got a winding coming around like this, around the core. Pardon my drawing. I'm putting it both in front of and behind. Okay. Now, over here, we've got the input the shield of the coax, let me just draw something to make that kind of look like the shield, I'm sorry, the center conductor. Right here we have the center conductor. It's attached physically right here, and that's the one that's the plus sign. Now the shield is connected halfway down right here. Okay, that's the shield of the coax. This is 50 ohm coax and this is 200 ohms uh, over here. Okay. Now note that ladder line, if you're going to connect this to ladder line, you really don't want a 4 to 1 uh, ballon. You want like a, uh, uh, let's see, that would be 450 ohms divided by 50. You want a 9 to 1 ballon to get it up to 450 ohms if you're going to put 450 ohm line here. Now I want to look at uh, what is going on inside this uh, inside this magnet here. Um, this is the toroid of course. It's wound around it. This is the primary from here to here now the secondary in an auto transformer is from here to here. Now let's assume the shield is zero volts. So if that's zero volts, whenever this is positive here, let's get a different color. Wait, I've got all these colors. I should use them. Okay, when this right here is positive, this is zero, and this down here is negative. And because there are just as many windings down here, this auto transformer works to double the voltage down to here. So this will be a, po a negative voltage equal to the positive volts. So if this is two volts here, it's going to be minus two volts here, right here where it goes out. Now, do you see what we've done? We've taken a balanced feed line right here, and with the auto transformer action, we push it down to minus two volts. So this right here is balanced coming out. It's a ballon, unbalanced to balanced or balanced to unbalanced. Okay, a ballon. I guess we don't say unbal. Uh, so that is how you get the ballon action on a voltage ballon. Now again, this is a voltage ballon. And in a voltage ballon, the voltage here and the voltage here will be mirror images of each other. Okay, so this is how you get from a unbalanced line like a coax up to something balanced that you want to put into your um, your system, into your antenna. And that's it. That's really all there is to this thing, the magic in here. Now why it costs so much is you've got a hefty hunk of the uh, magnetic uh, toroidal core in there 
and this is very high quality Teflon coated wire in here. This will handle a great deal of power, four kilowatts. Now that does not mean four kilowatts continuous. It means um, in normal amateur service. In other words, something like single sideband or CW or something like that where there are periods of rest followed by periods of transmission and then periods of rest or reception uh, times like that. Now, uh, can something this hefty work with a small signal? Absolutely. The losses are very low. Uh, they advertise, advertise an insertion loss of about 0 0.2 dB, which is hardly anything. It's very small. So there you go. This is uh, the beauty of a voltage ballon. Um, now, I, I want to make an announcement to make sure everybody knows this, that the Amateur Extra videos have been updated for 2020. So if you go to ke0og.net slash extra, you'll find the videos all there. You just click on the video you want. It will take you directly to YouTube, and you can watch the videos there. It's a great place to watch them. If for some reason you uh, can't uh, get good internet service or you're out in the boonies or you've got to study on the subway or something like that, I do have the videos available on uh, a memory stick, thumb drive, uh, for $49.99 postpaid anywhere in the United States. Uh, if you are out, and Puerto Rico, if you, which is part of the United States, if you are outside of that area, contact me for the shipping costs. International shipping rates are weird. And also, if you would, please check uh, dcastler.com slash support for ways that you can help fund this channel. And until we next meet, 73.